today we're going to review even and odd functions. Even and odd functions are special functions, and if you understand when functions are even and odd, you can use them later on in calculus to do some shortcuts, which can make your life a lot easier when you're finding integrals and other things. So we're going to spend a little time on that today. So let's start with the definition. f is an even function if and only if the f of the opposite of x, and we're going to say the opposite of x instead of negative x, because the opposite of x could be a positive number or a negative number. So anyway, if f of the opposite of x is equal to f of x. Classic example of an even function is f of x equals x squared. It doesn't matter if you put in 2 or negative 2. You get the same answer. 3 or negative 3 gives you the same answer. Negative 5 and 5 give you the same answer. That is what we mean by being an even function. Uh, your classic odd function is f of x equals x cubed. Um, if you put in negative 1, I get out negative 1. If I put in 1, I get out positive 1. If I put in negative 2 and I cube it, I get negative 8. And if I put in positive 2, I get positive 8. And we get this shape that looks kind of like that. Um, and these are the classics for even and odd. Uh, one thing you might notice is this even function, x squared, has an even power on x, and the odd function has an odd power on x, and that actually turns out to be true for how we can identify even and odd. But first, let's look at a table of some even odd functions. And remember, few functions are even and odd. Um, they are special cases. So I have an even function, an odd function, and a neither here. And let's take a look. And the idea to tell if something is even and odd is you want to compare what are outputs when you look at x and its opposite. So at negative 3, I get negative 5. And at 3, I get positive 5. So for opposite x's, I get opposite y's. That means odd. Let's check if the other ones are also true. At negative 2 for x, I get 3. And at 2 for x, I get negative 3. So once again, opposite x's give me opposite y's. That is odd. If we look at this, negative 1 and 1, give me negative 1 and 1. So again, opposite x's give me opposite y's. And a big key to being odd is generally going through 0, 0. So this is my odd function. In this case, the next function, g of x, if I look at g of negative 3, I get 11. g of 3, I get negative 1. There's no relation between negative 1 and 11. So the relationship between an x-coordinate and its opposite, there is no nice relationship between their corresponding y's, so this one is neither. And you may guess that my last function is going to be even, and you'd be correct, but let's check y. Negative 3 gives me 5 as my output. 3 gives me 5 as my output. So opposite inputs give me the same output. Same thing, negative 2 and 2 both give me 3 for my output. Negative 1 and 1 both give me 1 for my output. So this one is indeed even. Um, Graphically, what that looks like, if we go back, if we think back here, uh, x squared has what we call um, reflectional symmetry. And it's true that all even functions will have that reflectional symmetry. They will reflect over the y-axis. Um, if you think about it this way, if I put in 1 on this function, I get out negative 2. If I put in negative 1, I also have to get out negative 2. Similarly, 2 gets me negative 2. Negative 2 has to get me negative 2. 3 gets me 0. Negative 3 has to get me 0. And in fact, you should be able to see that I would have that sort of reflection. And then similarly, you know, at, at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 gives me 1. So negative 5 is also going to give me 1. And 7 gives me 2, so negative 7 is also going to give me 2. And I get this picture, like so, if I draw this fairly well, I should see that if I, if I flip this left to right, I should basically get almost the same picture. So that's my even function. Reflectional symmetry over the y-axis. How about when we go to odd? So in this case, I had the point 1, negative 2. 
an odd function, if I change from 1 to negative 1, I should also change the sign on my y. So negative 1 should give me a y value of positive 2. I have 2, negative 2. Negative 2 should also give me 2. And 3, 0 should give me negative 3, 0. 0 is still the same. And I get something like that. Um, over here, 5 gets me 1. So negative 5 should now get me negative 1. And since 7 gets me 2, negative 7 should get me the opposite of 2, or negative 2. And there's my shape. Now for odd, once again, we don't have that reflecting symmetry, we have what we call rotational symmetry. And if I do this fairly well, there's my function overall. And if I rotate that 180 degrees, I should end up with the same graph. And I pretty much do. All right. Um, so algebraically, I did mention that when you have even powers on x, you will have an even function. This function right here, negative x to the fourth plus 5x squared minus 1, is what we call even. Every power on x is even. Now, you might think, but negative 1 is odd. However, that is really negative 1 times x to the 0 power. And so there is a 0 power on x in that constant term of negative 1. In fact, any constant is an x to the 0, is an even piece of that polynomial. Um, and and it, it should make sense. If I put in negative 2, oops, that's how to say negative 2, and I take that to the fourth, and then I make that negative, that should be the same as taking 2 to the fourth and making that negative. Even powers always give me positive answers. So these are the same. Um, I can do the same thing. We have 5, we're going to take negative 2, and we square it. Well, negative 2 squared is going to be the same number as 2 squared. And so these two numbers right here are the same. These two numbers are the same. And in each case, I'm going to subtract 1, which is also the same. So same answer regardless of putting in 2 or negative 2. And it's true for any pair of a negative and positive number. Um, odd, we have all odd powers. So here we have x cubed. Now remember, x is the same as x to the 1. And I get this 180 degree rotational symmetry. And the idea is if I put in negative 1, so I take a negative 1 and I cube it, that gives me a negative 1. And then I have a negative on it. If I cube 1, right, this part right here, 1 cubed is positive 1, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. And so these answers oops, are going to be opposite of each other. They're the opposite for, for all the parts. And that is how we get our odd function. So even powers give us even fun functions. Odd powers give us odd functions.